Welcome back, Parasite. So today's topic is modeling with quadratic functions. And before you even start this video, I need you to go back to the website. Right next to the video, there is um, a worksheet that has basically everything that's on this paper written out. So I want you to first go there, write that down on your paper, make sure you have every single question written down, and then come back here. Okay? You should start watching this video once you have everything already written. Cool. Okay, so we're going to be doing a bunch of these in class. I just kind of wanted to give you a little intro as to how we should be thinking, how we're going to annotate, things like that. So one question that we're going to go over. So an object is fired upward with an initial velocity of 112 feet, I know you can't really tell my tube, that's a tube right there, it's 112 feet per second. Its height in feet above the ground as a function of time in seconds since it was fired is given by the equation h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 112 t. Now that's a lot of information they threw at you and I know that most of you guys did not understand what the hell they said. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. So, this is what we're going to go. We're going to see things that matter. In this case, where they're definitely giving us an equation. So, let's try to figure out what do all of these things mean based on all of the information they gave us. So, they, are, they already took into account that 112 feet. They already put it in the equation. They already took that into account. They're simply telling you this information. That's irrelevant. Do not add an extra 112 to your formula. When they give you a formula, that's the formula you're using. You're not making up another one, okay? So this right here, the only reason why they're telling you is because they want you to know a little bit more about the problem. So for example, here they start telling you, they're going to describe this equation. They're going to tell you its height. That's your h of t. h of t is going to be representing your height. This is your height. And every time you have an equation, you want to write down these things so you know exactly what they're talking about. And then they tell you, hey, your height is in feet. Okay, so that's my unit. So I know that my height has to be in feet. It's the next important thing that you should always write. So whenever I put something here, whatever I get out is going to be in feet. Um, then it tells you as a function of time. So that means that they're talking about time here. We're going to be inputting some time and getting feet out. We're going to get the height. So when the time passes, the height is going to come out. And then they're telling you, hey, the time is going to be described in seconds. So here's where I'm going to put it. All right, that's my time. T is time. And this is going to be done in seconds. Those are my units. All right, and that's about it. They kind of just told you. Hey, there's something being fired upwards, and this is what's going to show you what, whatever is the whole trail of this object. And this is going to be your time in seconds, and this is going to be your height. So the first question, at what height was the object fired? Well, the object fired, this happened at the beginning of time, so technically no time really passed when he got fired. Zero seconds passed when he got fired. Because it just started, boom, and then they fired it upwards. So technically, I want to know when my time was zero seconds, because no time had passed when we fired up the, the object, what's going to be my height? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my equation. I'm looking for h of zero. Negative 16, plug it in zero, 112, and obviously you can tell Everything is going to be multiplied by zero, so it's going to be zero feet. So we're going to start right from the ground. Okay, next question. Sketch a general curve of this equation below. So, first things first, let's make ourselves a little graph. And I'm obviously going to be drawing only the positive one because we're talking about time. And we're talking about the height. So it doesn't really make sense for me to graph the negative side. All right. My x-axis in this case is my time. And my y-axis is going to be my height. So that's something else that you always have to label. All right. 
Now, the one thing that I can definitely say, well, when the time was zero, my feet was zero. We started right at the ground. Now, this was thrown up. So this went up, 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 up. And at some point in time, it has to come down, right? Gravity is going to make it come down. And then boom, 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 boom. It is going to get there. All right, we're going to come back all the way back to the ground where the height is zero again. Now, the reason why I'm not putting an arrow going here, because now you're telling me I'm getting to a negative height. That's like, it was like it went through the ground or something. But that didn't happen. So, okay. Now, that looks like a, a curve that could potentially be it. Again, you don't have to be exact because they're just telling you a sketch. Every time they tell you a sketch... You, all you have to do is your units and sketch it as best, best as you can. All right, next one. I kind of don't want to miss the... I'm going to write down the equation here because it looks like it's not going to fit. T squared plus 112T. Okay. I'm going to keep going with the next one. Oops. Okay, algebraically, find the time... Find the time. First part of your question, they're telling you to find the time that the rocket reaches its greatest height. I want the greatest height. Or the maximum height. Keyword, maximum height, biggest height, same thing. They just said it twice. You notice that? How they just want to put words to confuse you? Because they just said it twice. Same thing. Um, label these on the graph that you drew on part B. Okay, so my maximum height, if I'm looking at my graph, my maximum height, it's all the way at this point right here. So that's going to be some time. And it's going to give me whatever this height is. Now we talked about this point right here. We actually figured out how to find that. Because look at that. That point right there, that's a vertex. Or a turning point. And you know how to find the vertex. So let's, to make it easy in this case, let's find, let's use our equation. So remember, it was x equals negative b over 2a. Now in this case, x is our time, right? So instead of x, let's cross this out, and let's write t equals, because that's our time. Let's plug things in. So our b in this case is 112, so that's negative 112 over 2 times my a, in this case is negative 16. Right. And then when I put that in the calculator, well actually, that's 112 and that's a negative 32. And putting that in the calculator, you get 3.5. Now, you're not done. Because this is time, this has a unit. They told you what it was. They told you this was in seconds. That was 3.5 seconds. Now, because they also told you to label it on the graph, we're going to say, okay, this time right here is 3.5 seconds. All right, let's find the height now. So that was when we plug it back into our formula. So now we're looking for h of 3.5. So I'm plugging 3.5 into the formula. Negative 16 times 3.5 squared plus 112 times 3.5, put that all in, and you should get 196, and because this height is in feet, we're going to write feet, and again, let me label it here, that was 196 feet, all right, cool, I found my vertex point, awesome, let's keep going, all right, so now, last part, Algebraically, determine the time when the rocket reaches the ground. So now here you have to think about it. What's happening at the ground? When it reaches the ground, the height, there's no height because it touched the ground. I'm here. There's no height between me and this paper. So technically, my height is going to be zero when it, t when it touches the ground. So now... I'm looking for the time. I'm solving for t. So I have my equation. Bam, bam, bam. It is negative 16 t squared 
plus 112 t and I know that my height is going to be 0 and I'm solving for t so I notice based on my little graph here you should know that you should be getting two answers because this is one is getting to the ground is that point right here which is 0 comma 0 and that point right here so I should be getting both of these out all right so factoring you can do the quadratic formula in this case c would be zero because there's nothing next to it but in this case it seems pretty simple to just factor out something they have in common they have a t in common and they also have a negative 16 in common now obviously if you didn't see that that's fine that just takes some playing around to do or um you could also just take out the t you don't really have to take out the negative 16. All right, so then I'm left with a t on the inside minus 7. And then from here, using your zero product law, you see, I'm going to go here, zero product law to solve for t. So that's the part in where we take each piece and we set it equal to zero and we solve for t. So negative 16t is equal to 0, and then the other one, t minus 7 equals 0. Solve for t, divided by negative 16, divided by negative 16, t equals 0. Boom, that was this point right here. We got it. Then the next one, plus 7, plus 7, t equals 7. That has to be this one. So this one is 7 seconds. This one is 0 seconds. Okay, so there again, I'm labeling this on my graph. And that's it for today. Have a great day, guys. Bye.